Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Game Changer Mentality Podcast. I am your host, Rodney Flowers, best-selling author, keynote speaker, and resilience trainer. And today we have a great show lined up for you. I have with me Mr. Jerry Gladstone. He is the author of The Common Thread of Overcoming Adversity and Living Your Dreams, a groundbreaking book about real people and their real stories. This book features Academy and Award, Academy Award and Grammy winners, Super Bowl and World Series champions, rock and roll, Hall of Fame legends, best-selling authors, Olympians, boxing and UFC world champions, and even billionaires. And he's here with me to talk about what were those interviews like, the common thread between all of those types of people, and how what we learn here can allow us to be game changers in our own lives, to get over adversity in our own lives, to get over the challenges and be all that we could be, live our dreams in our own lives. So Jerry Gladstone, welcome to the show, brother. Good morning, Rodney. Great to talk to you again, pal. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I'm glad you're here. So tell us about this book, The Common Thread of Overcoming Adversity. What is this about? Well, Tell you, one day I was having a conversation, a little simple conversation with my wife, and we were talking about people that we know that seem to have great potential. And I know that, you know, we all run into these type of people every day, seem to have great potential, for, but forever, for whatever reason, they can't seem to get out of their own way. So I said to my wife, listen, I don't care whether you're a, an entertainer, an athlete, a scholar, an author, whatever it may be. I said there's a common thread to success, a common thread to overcoming obstacles. And I said, boy, that would be a really cool book. So with my career over about a 25-year period, I've done business with very well-known, successful people, some of which you have mentioned. And I really did notice that there was a common thread to success. You know, anybody from Snoop Dogg to Bill O'Reilly to Howard Stern to Muhammad Ali uh, to Mark Cuban, from all different walks of life, all different colors, all different backgrounds, there truly was a common thread to success. So I said, well, geez, I'm going to go write the book. I went back to a lot of um, these individuals. I interviewed them. I really dug deep as far as drilling down really, you know, what do you do when you, you really don't feel like doing something that's uncomfortable? You know, all these things that we face each and every day. And I got some really remarkable answers, some great insights, some great wisdom um, from these people who are really, you know, it, it becomes a lifestyle for them as far as succeeding. When they hit obstacles, they know what to do. When they're down, they know what to do. Um, so, I really learned a lot, and again, at the end of the day, um, you know, we could talk about a lot of different things, but certainly focus on what we can all do to take the next step, step forward on our journey through success. So we're going to get into that, right? What, what can we do? And I want to talk about, you know, who are some of these people, like names that you've, you've interviewed, but you just, you just said something that I really want to bring out before we even get there, and you said they make it a lifestyle to, to overcome obstacles. That's, that's, you know, let's, let's stop right there. I mean, I mean, really? Like, who wants to make it a lifestyle to overcome obstacles? So expound on that. I mean, if you, you really believe that making it a lifestyle to overcome obstacles, what do you mean by that, Jerry? Well, I tell you, the concepts are fairly easy. It's a matter of doing it. You know, when they see a challenge or they see an obstacle, they don't necessarily focus on how uncomfortable it's going to be. They focus at the goal that they want to achieve. When they're having a difficult time, whether you're an athlete in training or you're going to school as a kid or you have to read something or you want to go start a business, yeah, part of being uncomfortable is just part of what you have to do but they remain extremely optimistic and extremely focused on the end goal. So whatever they have to do is just a means to an end. If they have to knock down one wall after another wall and get shut down and deal with rejection and, and lose, it's all to them a learning experience. And all that means is it's a one step forward closer to their goal. 
So a lot of these guys, they look forward to, okay, well, this is another obstacle. This is another challenge. This is another person who's saying no to me. Okay, fine. I'm going to disprove these, person, uh, these people again. So they really keep their eye on the ball. Another thing, because it's not just one thing that makes somebody successful, mm -hmm. but it's another thing. They're very optimistic. Now, that sounds easy, but they surround themselves by optimistic people. They focus on the things that they have as opposed to things they don't have. They make the most out of the things that they have. They don't care whatever that, if that door is just open a little tiny bit, guess what? They're looking and they're gonna get through that door. So there, there's just so many th different things involved in it, but truly, any conditions at all, no matter what the conditions are, they keep moving forward. They don't sit back, they don't procrastinate, you know, sometimes you got to slow down, but they don't quit. They keep moving forward while others kind of sit there and say, well, no, it's really not for me. I, I, I really can't do this. And that's not a good formula for success. And, and, and this is a lifestyle. And I really wanted to really bring that, that part out. And so these are things that the, these people um, do as a habit, I should say. I mean, this is, you know, this is, it's a lifestyle, right? It's not like, uh, something that they do sometimes or when it feels good. What you're describing is the way these people behave and how they live their lives on an ongoing, continuous, day-to-day -day basis. Am, am I right about that? You're right. And here's something, you know, I always try to give a takeaway. To me, this is probably the most important takeaway that I can give and share to people. What happens is when we reach or we have a goal and we want to reach that goal, we get all excited. Yeah, 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 I can start a new business. Yeah, 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 I'm going to be a keynote speaker. Yeah, 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 I'm going to do this. And guess what, Rodney? Within seconds, we literally start telling ourselves why we can't do it. No doubt about it. We're all excited, and then all of a sudden we start saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the money. People will laugh. It's amazing. So what I try to tell Jerry, are you still there? I, I don't think we have a good connect. Um, hey, brother. Hello? Oh, man, I was on the roll. I don't know where I lost you. Yeah, we can, uh, we can, we can pick yeah, it up. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little shaky though. I mean, yeah. do you have good internet connection? Because I, I seem to have pretty good internet connection. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So do I. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna get back into this. Hold on. We're recording. All right. No worries. We can. We do. We do. We can off. Yeah, we 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 can edit, so it's no big deal. Let me see if I can get this going again. Come on, man. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not sure where you got cut off, though, so. Yeah, you were talking about, um, hold on. It's going to come to me in a second. Come on, baby, record, record, record. You want me to go back to that? There's one takeaway? That's it. That's it. You were saying there's one takeaway, yeah. Yeah, so let me know. You can ask me that question again, you know, whatever that you probably a question was about lifestyle, or you can even ask me, is there one takeaway? And I'll get into that because that's really important. We are, we do self sabotage, as you know. Yeah, hold on. There we are. Okay. Yeah, okay. So um, I had just mentioned that, uh, you know, these people, they practice what you were just describing every day in their lives. You know, this is not something they do when it feels good or when, you know, it's the appropriate time, you know, overcoming obstacles, living the life of their dreams is, is, is it's something that they, they, they absolutely, you know, demand and mandate in their lives and, and they won't settle for anything, anything less than that. And so you were mentioning there's one takeaway that you, you, right here, here's the story. If, you know, 
Yeah, so here's, here's the story. If there is one takeaway, I always try to give one. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead, Jerry. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I'm good. Okay. So you can edit this part so we can. Uh... Yeah. Okay, go. Yeah, we'll edit this part out. No problem. So listen, if there's one takeaway that I can really share with everybody. Okay. So if there's one takeaway that I can really share with everybody, it's this. Let's imagine for a second you have a goal and you want to start a new business or you want to become this great athlete or you want to lose weight or you want to achieve something and you're really excited about it, you're pumped up and you're just so excited, like, boy, I can't really do this. We all experience, right? But here's the problem. Literally within seconds, we see ourselves why we can't do it. We're not good enough. We don't have money. People will laugh at me. I'm not smart enough. I can't do it for this reason, for that reason, or for another reason. Literally, within seconds of having a goal, you start telling yourself why you can't have that goal, why you can't achieve it. We have to stop that. It's negative self-talk. I tell people, imagine if I said to you, Rodney, what you say to yourself. Chances are you want to punch me in the face. If I ever said to you, geez, you don't have the money, you're not, you're not good looking enough, people will probably laugh at you, uh, you're just not good enough, it's not in the cards for you, which is what you're saying to yourself, but if I said that to you, you'd literally want to punch me in the face. That's what we have to get away from. You really have to talk about a lifestyle. When you feel that negative energy coming, that negative conversation that you have in your head, you got to get out of there, man. You cannot do that. You have to remain optimistic. You have to keep on telling yourself why something can be done. Surround yourself by people who tell you things can be done. Read books like Get Up to tell you how things can be done and stay excited. Stop telling yourself why things can't get done. Stop telling yourself that you're not good enough. That's the one thing that these people do. That's the common thread of what a lot of these people do. We all have these great goals, and then we sit there and we procrastinate and we ponder. Why? Because we're unsure. We start telling ourselves all these crazy things. So a common thread that you could develop for yourself, knock it off. Now, this is very important as well, too. It's very important to really think about what your goal is. And I love writing things down, and I love doing all kinds of charts and graphs on how I'm going to do something. That's fine. Got no problem whatsoever. But once there's a plan in place, my friend, shut the brain off. So what happens is people have a plan. It's never going to go exactly the plan. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. They get to step two, and it doesn't necessarily work out. So they sit there, and they start questioning, and they start thinking. What you got to do is when that plan is in place, which you thought out pretty well, Shut your brain off and keep on doing the one step after the another step after the another step. If the plan has to be changed slightly, change it, but keep moving forward. Again, we get in our own way. Your competition, you've heard this before, mm -hmm. your competition is not your coworker. Your competition isn't going to be the guy who you're fighting on the other side of the ring. The competition is always the person in the mirror and not yourself. you got to get out of your own way. Now, you've heard that before, but I'm trying to go a little bit deeper. Stop telling yourself you're not good enough and stop overthinking things. Keep moving forward under any and all conditions, period. Oh, I love that. And I love your passion about it. So let's talk about some of the people that you, you have interviewed uh, in the book. So can, can you name some of the folks that you had the, the opportunity to sit down with and, and interview? Jerry. Well, it's funny, you know, these are, I don't want to say these are like my children, but because some are older, a lot older than I am. But I, I love them all. They come from all different walks of life. But the person by far that had the biggest influence with me, because I was very much an underachiever in school. I was always in trouble. I totaled three cars by the time I was 20 years old because I had a too, few too many cars. Way back when. So hold on, hold on, Jerry. Let's let's back. You know, up talking about the 1970s. Oh, 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 yeah. Always went to summer school. That was cheap. Yeah, let's start start that over because you you started breaking up as soon as you started talking. So start back with the uh, you don't want to call these your children. 
Okay. Got it. Go ahead. So a lot of people ask me, you know, who's my favorite interview? Who's yeah. So a lot of people ask me who's my favorite person or who's my favorite interview in the book. And it's really my favorites. I really um, love a lot of them. I've worked with uh, many of them over the years uh, within my business. But the person that by far had the biggest impact on me, because I was in a lot of trouble when I was a kid, uh, you know, definitely a lot of F's and a lot of D's and uh, was most likely not to succeed, uh, was in trouble in all sorts of different ways. And, uh, you know, just that's the way it was. Uh, but when I was 16 years old, I'll tell you this, Rocky came out. Rocky came out. I went to the movies and I was, you know, again, in a lot of trouble. He made me believe, he planted as a seed that I didn't have to be the biggest, strongest, smartest, have the most, I didn't need anything. All I needed was heart, drive, and determination. And guess what? I took it hook, line, and sinker. And I said, okay, that's me. That's going to be my personality. No matter what comes my way, I have to have this deep desire to deal with the punches of life, to deal with these obstacles, whatever it is, because I don't want to feel bad about myself. Rocky didn't want to feel bad about himself. So he planted the seed, and again, I didn't have to be, have to be the biggest, strongest, or fastest, but with heart, drive, and determination, I can achieve. 30 years fast forward, I did business with uh, Sylvester Stallone himself. My company uh, was a marketing company, and uh, we dealt in a variety of consumer products, and we were chosen to develop a host of products uh, for the 30th anniversary of Rocky. Here's a guy that I, I don't want to say I idolized him, but if I'm going to idolize one guy, it's, it's the Rocky attitude. 30 years later, again, I uh, had the opportunity to, uh, to deal with the company. And I said, well, geez, if we could sit down with uh, Mr. Stallone, it would be wonderful. We could really develop some great merchandise. Because I always say, hey, go for the note. Why not just ask? I never expected the same old to say, okay. So they said, well, okay, can you be out in California within the next couple of days? I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll be there. Long story short, sat down with Sly, we hit it off, it was unbelievable. We developed some great products, sold them out very nicely. But me and him sat down one-on-one -on -one for hours at a time, and boy, let me tell you something. Everything that you see in Rocky, he's not much more in real life. I guess he was in his mid-60s or so, and I started asking him for this book and for a variety of other things, he says, you know, why do you still do this? You're arguably, you know, you, you got an unbelievable franchise with Rocky, with Rambo. You have enough money. What drives you? Because a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't have the passion. Well, maybe this guy shouldn't have the passion because he's done so much. And he looked at me like he was a 25-year-old, still with the passion. He goes, someday somebody's going to try to take my job. They're trying to take it right now. I'm not going to let it. Well, this is a guy who's fairly confident, <laughs> and he had to drive. You don't get from 20, 25 to 30 year old people. He goes, You got to get out there. You got to be willing to compete. He goes, That's the problem. People are not willing to put things on the line and get out there and compete and knock on doors and do whatever it takes. Now, again, this is a very accomplished guy who has done so much in so many different venues, yet he was still full of that what they call piss and vinegar, ready to take the world on. And you know what? That really said a lot to me because if he can still have that attitude with all his accomplishments, because he could just sit back on the beach and have a few drinks, right? But he still had that competitive edge. He made a very, very, uh, very nice uh, impression on me, to say the least. So, so he, he doesn't just uh, talk the talk. He definitely walks the walk. I mean that's that's really good and and what I'm what I'm gaining from from what you're saying uh, just from interviewing Sylvester Stallone is that you know a lot of a lot of you know tools and, and and strategies there's a lot of talk about those types of things a lot of those things are out there for people to become successful but what I'm getting me personally from from what you're saying in your interview with Sylvester Stallone is that you know it's just making a decision and sticking with that decision and putting in the effort and the hard work and maintaining that, sustaining that drive, you know, until you get what you want and beyond. I mean, that's, that's what I, I get out of, uh, out of what you're saying. So, so based on that um, and, and your interviews with, with Sylvester Stallone, 
You know, what, what, are, what are some of the things that, that, held, that hold people back from reaching their goals? And what can they do about it? The fact is it's generally themselves. And again, I don't want to, I'm going to kind of give you a broad statement, which I believe about 99%. The fact that most people know what to do. They do. If they want to lose weight, they know they're supposed to stay away from the chips and the sodas and the this and that. They know they're supposed to exercise. They don't have to go read a book on that. If most people want to achieve a certain goal, they kind of should kind of understand how to get started. So what do people have to do? You've heard it before. Hopefully I can just explain it a little bit differently. Get out of your own way. Be with experience. You know, I, I've done all lot of good things in my life that was pretty successful as an athlete, as an author, as an entrepreneur. But you want to know a secret? I failed a lot more time than I succeeded. People focus on all these successes, but for every three things that I succeeded at, I struck out seven out of 10 times. You know how many deals I went after? We dealt with different movie studios and different celebrities. Most said no. But the ones that said yes, it's, it, to me, when, there's a, when I get a no, that's one more closest step to the yes. You have to go through a bunch of no's. So you're asking, what's the one thing? Figure it out, just keep on Googling, how do I get out of my own way? And then something will stick. You know, a lot of people have been saying the same thing for years and years and years. Get out of your own way, you competition yourself. It's true. I've dealt with the most successful people in the world. It's true. So whatever it takes for you to understand that concept, whether people can listen to me and understand that concept, Rodney, or listen to you, or listen to whoever, understand the concept that you have to get out of your own way. You have to start developing optimism in your life and a belief system in your life. So get out there and just focus on that one thing. How do I get out of my own way? How do I stop competing against myself? And there's a lot of people who have all kinds of different ways to, of explaining it. But if you focus on that concept and just find something that relates to you, man, you're going to be well on your way. So there's something that you, you keep repeating, and that's get out of your own way. Let's dive a little deeper on that. What, let's give the audience what you mean when you say get out of your own way. So can you, can you peel the onion back on that a little bit? Again, it's a fairly simple concept. People have a goal. Within seconds, they tell themselves why they can't do it. They're not good enough and a variety of other reasons. Stop telling yourself you're not good enough. You are, you are good enough. The people that I dealt with, very successful people, very well-known people. Mark Cuban, everybody knows the talk right? He will be the first one to tell you, if I can do it, you could do it. Nobody's better than you. They put their pants on the same way as you do every single day. So that's the truth. So you have to get out of your own way. Stop telling yourself you're not good enough. Go make a list. Yeah, go make a list of what has to get done. Think it out. Go Google. Go talk to friends. Go talk to people who have been there, done it. And write a list down of what needs to get done in order for you to achieve your goal. And shut your mind off and get that list done. Period. Let's say there's 10 steps. Get those 10 steps and then you can evaluate the situation. And chances are you're going to be a whole lot closer to your goal than not. I'll give you an idea from a personal standpoint. Again, I was not, I was very much an underachiever. And I was in my young or so 20s, and I was watching National Geographic, and there was a guy named Mel Fisher on TV, and they were focusing on him that he spent 16 years searching for this treasure ship that went down in the 1600s, 1621. It's called the Atocha. And got all kinds of investors and raised all kinds of money, and people called him a fraud, and he was a sham, he was this, he was that. And he kept on searching and searching. During the search, he lost his son, his daughter-in-law, and a crew member because one of the boats capsized. But at the end of the day, 16 years later, he found what they call the mother load. 
$400 million worth of treasure. Gold, silver, emeralds, artifacts. It was amazing. Now, here's a guy. His was his saying. Okay? His saying was, today's the day. For 16 years, he said, today's the day. Talk about optimism. Now, National Geographic, pretty popular channel back in the day. How many people were watching that? Thousands, if not more. Tens of thousands, right? But I said to myself, boy, that guy's really cool. I'm going to call him up. Nobody told me I couldn't call him up. The next day I called this guy up, he answered the phone. Now, here's the guys on national TV that do all whole big thing. Like, he answered the phone. No Fisher can help you. Whoa, Mr. Fisher, my name is Jerry Gladstone. I love what I saw there. I love to do business with you. He goes, fine, if you're ever down in Key West, Florida, look me up. What did I do? Down to Florida. Down to, you know, down to Key West. Looked him up. Went out, sat down with him. I'll give you a really quick, funny story. 10 o'clock in the morning, I meet him. He goes, well, why don't I go off for some soup? I said, soup, 10 o'clock in the morning, okay, you melt fish, we'll go off some soup. His definition of soup was double 151 and Coke. <laughs> Needless to say, we got along really well. Ronnie, by the end of the weekend, I signed an exclusive agreement to represent his portion of the treasure. Now, was I smarter than anybody? No, was I nothing? I didn't get in my own way. I saw a guy on TV. I had a little passion. Most people would say at that particular point, I can't call him up. He won't answer the phone. Who am I? I don't have the experience. I didn't even have a business at that point. I said, No, 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 no. Rocky told me to go for things. Remember the impact that Rocky had? I called him up. He answered the phone. He said, If you ever down in Key West, give me a call. Most people would say, Oh, Key West, man, I don't know, go all the way down there. He's just going to say no. He's going to laugh at me. I don't have the money, whatever. No, got on a plane to Key West. Sat down with him, built a rapport. Long story short, that's how I started my business. Did millions of dollars with Mel Fisher. Now, it was, it was a few simple steps. Get out, I got out of my own way. Get out of your own If you still to me. Take the opportunity. Go for the no. Who cares? It? Mel could have said no. Again, I'd rather regret not going after something, or I'd rather regret, yeah, not going after something than, than, and not getting it. Who cares if I don't get it? But you have to get out there. You have to go. Nobody's going to do it for you. Listen, the second, the second you become proactive, proactive in what your goal is, I mean really proactive, is the second you start really moving forward. So get proactive, make the calls, get out there, talk to people. You see a tiny little opportunity, go, go after that opportunity because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of, a lot of individuals, uh, they don't have that faith in themselves and they don't have people around them that have demonstrated what can happen. That's why I believe the environment is so important. So when they do get a go, you know, it, it's, it's that challenge. It's not the challenge of the goal that they have to get over and accomplish in the goal. It's the challenge of, you know, the thoughts and, and the beliefs that they have about themselves. I mean, that prevents them from the jump, from even, you know, stepping towards the goal. And so this is, this is you know, very, very critical when it comes to uh, achieving great things, being a game changer, because, I mean, I think you're right. I think this stops a lot of people dead in their tracks before they even get, before they even get started. And, and, I, and I really do believe that, that one of the ways that we can get over this is, you know, we have, to, we have to stop looking at things that have gone before and really, really tapping into our unique gifts and the things that we see in ourselves, getting intimate with ourselves and understanding what we are truly capable of. Because we are truly capable of, of a miraculous things, but I don't think we believe that about ourselves. And, and you know what? We make it okay for others to do it, you know, for the celebrities and the actors and, and the people that are, are rich and are really making it happen. You know, we make it okay. It's all right for them to do it. But when it comes to ourselves, you know, we, we, we accept less than that. And that, that's a problem. That's, that's a major problem. And I think if we're going to be game changers, we're going to change the game in our own lives. I mean, that thinking about ourselves has to change. And it has to change right now. 
right now. Man, this is awesome. Okay. Did, you, did you have something you want, wanted to add to that? Well, the fact is, you know, you mentioned the celebrities, you know, a lot of people, they think they were born with Silver Spoon. You know, the fact is, is that very few of them were born that place that they are or the rich people that they are. They started off the same way as you and I back in the day, selling garbage bags door to door back in the day. Go Google any celebrity or any very wealthy person, see how they started off. They started off one foot at a time and they kept moving forward. Nobody, there's no such thing as an overnight success. It just doesn't happen. And if you, if you were an overnight success with one hit wonder or whatever, you're going to fall quick. Again, it's right. a lot of my stories, I agree with you. You got to get out of your own way. We all have so much potential, but you got you to gotta let it out there and be willing to fail. It's okay, but you really should reach. My whole, whatever your true potential is, reach it. That's all. Yeah, I love that. And, and, and I think uh, another thing that you just said was about the failure. We have to be willing to fail. A lot of people don't want to fail. They're afraid of failing. They're afraid of, of you know, they may re realize the, the, the unique gifts that they have, but they're afraid of showcasing that gift out of the potential of failing. But it's okay if you fail. As a matter of fact, failing is part of the ego, process. Ego, ego, ego. Ego. Let's talk about that. What, what do you oh, yeah. have to say about And it's that? their ego. Ego, ego, ego. Ego. Man, it's okay. You know, I, I do uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, I was a black belt in traditional karate. It took me 10 years to get a black belt. I was a, a football player like yourself and still in good shape. And a guy about 135 pounds asked me if I wanted to roll with him, and that's, what, that's another name for sparring. Now, I'm 230. I got this guy by about 100 pounds. It took him about 30 seconds to choke me out. And I'm a tough guy. I was a bouncer. I was a boxer. I, I, I did it all. I said, man, that's got it. That's something. There's something wrong there. I said, let's do it again. Second time, he choked me out in 15 seconds. So... I said, I got to learn this stuff. So now I started, I put my ego at the door, started off as a white belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I've been in for about, you know, five years or so. I'm a purple belt now. Say something. If you don't check your ego every single day, you're not going to get anywhere. Because it's okay. I have to check my ego. I distance myself from the, the fighter that I used to be because it had – some shortcomings. So if I want to, I'm a tough guy. I don't need that. Only person I'd be fooling is myself. So sometimes you got to take your ego, be willing to get out there and, you know, swallow humble pie and get back there and relearn things. You got to get on stage. You got to talk. People are going to screw it up. Okay, guess what? You're not going to screw it up the, five, the fifth time or tenth time or anything else. So take your ego, check it at the door, and do what you need to do to learn the new skills to achieve the goals that you want. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the studio with Jerry Glassstone, the author of The Common Thread of Overcoming Adversity and Living Your Dreams. Right now, we're talking about checking your ego at the door. So, Jerry, uh, what, what else would you say to, to um, folks that have a goal or maybe they're dealing with some type of adversity or challenge? What are some other things that you would recommend in order to succeed over them? Okay, so let's talk about fear. Fear comes in a lot of different ways. People have a fear, well, I may get hurt, I may get embarrassed. A lot of people, you know, there's one thing I, I had to act from reaching their goal. Number one answer by far is fear. Fear of failure. Fear of embarrassment. Fear of getting hurt. Fear of coming up short, whatever that fear is. So here's how I, everybody says, okay, here's here, fear. That's the answer. Here's my solution. You want to hear my solution? Sure. I would say, do what you fear 100 times, and you will not fear again. 
Okay? Do what you fear 100 times you will not fear against. So let me get, get, get a little bit more on that. Whatever the situation is going to be, whatever the event is going to be, if you're going to do public speaking, if you're going to go for a job interview, whatever it is, if you're going to go to a jiu-jitsu tournament, whatever it is, in the privacy of your own home, set up, replicate, replicate as close to that environment as you can. Picture the audience. Picture the adversity that you're going to be facing. Deal with it mentally and go over it over and over and over again until you actually look forward to that day. I'll give you an example. I was a kickboxer back in my day, days in New York. And there was a, uh, there was a sparring, little sparring match that we set up with the, uh, with the uh, New York State champion. And it was a sparring match that we would, I was just going to go to. It was down in Brooklyn. And I was like, okay, it's a spar match. It's cool. It's kind of a closed door thing. You know, not going to be a big crowd there. So it's all cool. I get there. They put me in the ring. Okay, I'm in the ring. All the lights are off. I'm like, what, what's going on? All of a sudden, the lights go on. The music starts coming on. Like it's a real fight. The guy, my opponent, coming out in his robe, walking out with his manager, rubbing his shoulders. What do you think he was doing? He was replicating what he would face during a real fight. So he didn't have to do that. This was just a sparring match. But he wanted to get used to the walkout. He wanted to get used to the music. He wanted to get used to lights. So by the time he gets to the real match, he's very comfortable. So he steps into the ring. Within about 30 seconds, I hit him with like my best shot. He kind of smiled at me. I said, okay, professional kickboxing is not for me. So it was a good match, but what was the takeaway? The takeaway is that, you know, this guy is doing, he's replicating what he's going to face. So he doesn't have any fear. He actually looks for it. So whatever you're going to, whatever you have a fear about, some way, somehow replicate that over and over and over again where you're comfortable, where you're safe. So you can go through all the different scenarios of what you may face. And then guess what? The day of the event, hey, I've done this a hundred times. I'm ready to rock and roll. I love that, man. I was I was reading, I was reading this book by Dr. Ma, uh, Maxwell Maltz, and he was saying the same thing that you're saying. And he uh, he used the example of Simone, who's a famous comedian, and she had stage fright. Now this lady is funny if you ever heard her, and you would think you know she would she wouldn't have any stage fright because she's so amazing on stage. But he knows her backstory, and one of the things that she would do to get over her stage fright is she would she would rehearse her her script for her jokes and everything in her underwear in her house. Right. You know because she felt like if she can get that vulnerable, be that vulnerable, and still you know, bring forth her jokes and 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 yeah, yeah. create that type of environment, she wouldn't have the fear on stage. She would get over the fear on stage. So what you're saying is absolutely correct. And and to to take this further, I do that now. I mean I'm a speaker. And so I'll go through my my talks in my house. You know, I'll read my script to myself in my house. I'll practice in my house. By the time that I, I get on stage and I do mm -hmm. a talk, I've done that talk several times. It's yes. not the first time, you know, getting up, doing talk. You know, I'm very comfortable with the talk. So, I mean, that that is a major takeaway for those that are listening and really want to be game changers in your life. There you have it. I mean, that's something right there that can absolutely change your life. Again, do what you fear 100 times and you will fear no more. That's you show awesome. me something successful and I'll show you somebody who is not only worked hard, but somebody who was willing to get out of the comfort zone, somebody who has dealt with their fear. That's what success is, knowing how to handle all these things. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're in the studio with Jerry Gladstone, the author of The Common Thread of Overcoming Adversity and Living Your Dream. So Jerry, if people wanted to buy the book, if they wanted to, to contact you, where could they, where could they find you? Well, if they want to buy the book, they can go on Amazon, 
And, uh, you know, just type in the comments right above Becoming Diversity, Living Your Dreams, or Jerry Gladstone. Or if they wanted to contact me, they can contact me through the Common Thread group, because the book was called The Common Thread, right? So I have the Common Thread group. Com. So my contact info is there or on Facebook as well. So go to, uh, you know, helping others. Awesome. So uh, this has been great, man. And uh, I, I really appreciate what you're doing in the world. I really appreciate this book. Uh, I think it's awesome and all the people that you've interviewed and 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 I, I can see what the common thread is. That's there's no doubt about that. And, and thank you for sharing that with us here today. I really appreciate you being on the show. Do you have any final words before we uh, come to an end here? Yeah, there's only one more person I want to mention who is a true inspiration to me. And that's you, Rodney. You are an inspiration to me. The second I met you, I loved you, bro. And thank you for inspiring me. And thank you for inspiring the world. Thank you, Jerry. I, I absolutely appreciate that, man. That is, that is absolutely awesome. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you. All right, guys. There's another Enjoy. episode. No, you too, man. Thank you. There's another episode of the Game Changer Mentality Podcast. Thank you all for listening once again. And please don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Join our Facebook, book, Facebook community, Game Changers Transformation Community. And uh, I just thank you guys for listening, and I will see you next time on another edition of the Game Changer Mentality Podcast.